Hello and welcome to another Scott Sports Show. I am Tyler Trumbauer. The wrestling team has enjoyed a bit of a break here in the season with its last action coming back on November 15th at the EMU Duels where the squad took three wins, including an upset over then 8th ranked Michigan. However, they are gearing up for a big week ahead and to talk about that now, I'm joined by assistant wrestling coach Cliff Moore. Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks coach. And thanks for uh, joining me real quick. Uh, a little bit of a break for the team. The last two weeks, not too much competition for the entire squad. I know some wrestlers have entered some tournaments here and there. What has the team been up to in the wrestling room in the last half month? Um, yeah, it's been a long break. We're not used to it. And uh, I think it was good for them, you know, to see how they perform the first couple matches of the year and um, just focus on things to get better and, and kind of narrow down for this upcoming part of the year, which is pretty, um, pretty tough. We have some tough tools coming up. We have our PSAC tournament, as always, you know, early December, which is big for the school and big for us and uh, to compete against our local state schools. And then we have Grapple at the Guard and Midlands, which are two very big uh, matches. Yeah, that's coming up in the, in the future. Let's take another quick look at the past, though. We had uh, head coach Tim Flynn on a few shows ago, and he gave me his analysis on the beginning of the season. Uh, you're in the wrestling, wrestling room just as much, if not more, than Coach Flynn. Uh, how have the first few uh, competitions, duels gone in your eyes? Well, I wasn't at the Clarion Open. I was recruiting at, at the time, so I didn't see a lot, and, and Flynn wasn't really happy about the performance. You know, some guys perform well, and, and that's just usually how, you, how, you, how it is in wrestling. It's, it's very difficult to have everyone perform, mm -hmm. all 10 guys in a dual meet perform to their best, you know. So um, he wasn't real happy about Clarion, and we, we re looked at some things and, and kind of um, went just every, every time you had to go step by step. But you also can't get too, you can't make over adjustments to where you're doing something where you, you, all of a sudden you think you're going to panic. You know, you, you just got to keep doing the same thing. And, you know, the, the guys believe in the system we have. And, you know, they, just, they had a bad, a couple of them had a bad match. And they just got to refocus themselves. And a lot of times just when kids do it individually, that's when they, they make a turnaround, you know, as, as some of the guys did at Michigan or at Eastern Michigan where they had big turnarounds and made some bit, had some big matches. Yeah, Clarion wasn't the greatest start, as you said. Flynn wasn't too happy. The loss to Pitt here at home wasn't the best way to start off the dual meet season. Did turn it around in Eastern Michigan. And now after the break, now you're coming up. You have Cleveland State Thursday night, right after we're almost done here on this show. is going to end coming up at 7 o'clock. What are your initial thoughts on that team? A very tough team. You're going to have them at home at Macomb here after the long break. What's the mindset for the uh, Fighting Scots coming into this one? Well, the mindset's always the same. Um, the, the concern always is having a long break and not competing for a long time. Some of the kids, even though they're, they're ready to go, sometimes that long break makes them kind of sluggish when they get down to that, com that competing time to where they're just, when you have com competitions over and over again, they really get in that mode of competing, and, and they, a lot of times they perform well. So you're, you're always are concerned about that. So we really focus over the long break on, on keeping competition in mind and keeping close to that performance, keeping, the, um, keeping your training close to where you're performing. So we want to we replicate our training in the competition. Practice the way you play. That's the old mantra. Yeah. Now, Coach, they're hopefully going to get into that mode where it's just competition after competition now with Cleveland State. Uh, tonight, then just a quick turnaround with the PSAC Championships at Bloom on Saturday, which you alluded to earlier. Uh, the team has hoisted a few of those championships. You have a few wrestlers that have hoisted some individual ones as well. Uh, is the goal, is the mindset and the goals this Saturday to bring, some, bring home some hardware from Bloom? Yeah, I, we had PSACs here last year, right? I believe Mercerous so. Mercerus was going to have it, and we, we ended up moving it down here. And, and it, was a, it was a fun tournament. We had six in a row champions, I think. 125 up to 165, so it was a really fun, and I hope we can replicate that or, or you know. Maybe even be get better. Yes. Either way, and then the overall, overall team. <laughs> Ten champions is and, the goal. Yes, and then the overall team title will certainly come that way if you end up uh, sweeping the board quite like that. Now let's move on into the December uh, slate. As you mentioned, you have uh, Grapple at the Garden coming up, but before that you have uh, Clarion coming in, uh, a local PSAC foe the first one from the PSAC team-wise in a dual meet you'll have this season. C going into that one, what is kind of the thoughts on them? Uh, Clarion, maybe you have a little bit of an inside source with Austin Matthews being in the room this year. Don't know if you'll utilize him at all, but what is, what is the team looking ahead? I know you don't want to look too much because you have a few competitions before then, but early thoughts on uh, the Golden Eagles. 
Um, I think in, in all duels, you kind of have these these key matchups. Um, I guess it's similar to all sports. There's there's important matchups that you you want you want to win. You know, the close ones, the ones that are on paper, where the guys rank 10 or 12, and you're you're right there. You want to win those matches. You know, because that that has your guys move up. You know, if he beats a guy that's ranked above him a little bit, he moves up. You know, and and maybe you know we have all all on paper we're gonna we we have every every match. You know, so it, you you kind of have you want to focus on those ones that you think are gonna be close matches and and kind of look at those and and make sure those guys are ready for those matches. Thinking about little things that they can do to to overcome kind of the the guys the, the guys technique or what their what their plan of, what their plan of attack is. Thanks, Coach. Uh, thanks for coming on. I appreciate the time. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, on the other side, we're going to hear from one of the top wrestlers that Edinburgh boasts on the mats, and he's one of the best ones in the nation at, well, at 149 pounds as redshirt senior David Habit joins me next. Returning All-American Dave Habit joins me now on the Scott Sports Show. Dave, uh, last year uh, was definitely your coming out year for the, on the Fighting Scots uh, wrestling scene and we're in the wrestling scene in the nation, uh, obviously getting the All-American status. Do you feel that kind of, I mean, that obviously was a great accomplishment, but do you feel that kind of maybe hinders you a little bit because now all eyes are on you. They know you're one of the best wrestlers in the nation. You're a returning All-American. They know when they face Dave Habit, they're going to get a battle. Do you feel that kind of hinders you a little bit coming into matches this season? Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's all competition. You, you can forget about... Um, rankings and, and names and stuff. When I go and wrestle an opponent, they're all opponents to me. So, you know, regardless, I'm out there to get my hand raised. And uh, so when I'm wrestling a guy, I don't care if he's an All-American or not. I'm going to treat him the same way. So I, I definitely don't care if they think I'm uh, a good wrestler or not and that I'm a big-name wrestler. And, you know, I think since I came in as a freshman, I've been having success, just not the All-American part. So I think since I came in, you know, guys are trying to beat me, but um, for me out there, it's always competition. And, um, you know, you got to prepare for each match. So. Yeah, obviously you say you don't care about the rankings. Uh, some, some do. There are some rankings out there. I believe every ranking uh, has you at least in the top five, except for Flow Wrestling has you sixth in their uh, recent rankings. Uh, but they feel you've had a great season, obviously one of the top five in your weight class for the nation. How do you feel your first uh, competitions have gone? You didn't, com you didn't compete against the uh, Pitt Panthers, but Clarion Open, EMU duels, great showing by, uh, yours and the, by yourself and the team in that one. How do you feel you've done in the first month or so of the season? Uh, yeah, I think the uh, season's gone real well. Um, I do believe I'm in the top five, top six right now. Um, I did say the rankings aren't a big deal, but um, they are. I mean, uh, I agree with where they have me ranked and stuff as for now, and to get myself up further, i got to prove myself. But for the uh, Clarion Open, um, I thought I wrestled better than I ever have to start a season ever since uh, I've started wrestling. And uh, the, uh, I feel like the entire team's gotten better, especially at the uh, Eastern Michigan duels. And uh, unfortunately, I did miss the uh, pit match and uh, would have loved to compete in that. Um, but for the, the things I've competed in so far, I've thought I've done pretty well. Yeah, let's uh, dive into those Eastern Michigan duels a little bit more. I mean, that was a huge, huge competition for the team. Coming off that pit loss, you wanted to just bounce back. You wanted to still show that you still are Edinburgh, you know, wrestling, and that you fell back in the rankings as a team a little bit after the pit loss. But then you swept all three com uh, competitors that day, Northern Illinois, uh, Central Michigan, and Michigan that day, including Michigan, which was eighth ranked in the nation. How did the team feel coming back from Michigan. That was a long bus ride back, but I'm sure it was a, uh, a very happy one for your team. Um, you know, I don't remember how the the team the team felt after the match. Uh, after the dual meet was done, I went and sat with my family, and uh, I think a lot of people's family came because it's, it's not too far away. And then we all, a lot of us went out to eat, and we had different plans. And uh, But um, I know we were all happy. Uh, I was extremely happy with uh, Corey Mines because – his match was a key match in the pit match. It was also a key match in the Michigan match. Mm -hmm. I think the guy who wrestled from Michigan was better too. Um, uh, you know, there were some there were some guys like that who the Michigan match was pretty key. I um, I came in there and uh, I got a big pin. So um, I know we were pumped about it. Even uh, AJ Shop, the guy he wrestled, he always puts up bonus points. And uh, the guy he, the guy he wrestled usually gives him a, a closer match than most people. And uh, you know, he blew him out and. Um, and Mitchell Port wrestled, I think, the number three ranked guy. And he, I thought he beat him pretty easily. So um, 
I know we were pumped about it. I remember Flynn talking to us about it a little bit on the bus, and, uh, you know, it's a good start, but it, um, I think we're still getting better, and it, it doesn't just end there. So uh, next is Cleveland State. So Let's talk about Cleveland State a little bit. The team is a pretty local team just across the state border here. Uh, obviously coming into Macomb, your second home dual meet of the season. So there's going to be a lot of uh, eyes on you in that one. Hopefully gets a big crowd to pack Macomb uh, tonight. What is the team's thought process, your thought process coming into this one? Coach Moore just told us how it's kind of interesting got it, having to get back into competition mode after being out of it for so long. So what are the, uh, what are the thoughts in the wrestling room coming into uh, tonight's match? Um, you know, for me... Uh you know, I just take it uh, just very, uh, like, hour to hour, day by day. So um, I'm not thinking about the dual meet too much, honestly, right now. But, um, but uh, you know, the one thing, it, we, we have been out of competition for a while, but uh, Coach Flynn and Coach Moore have been working us real hard. I know we're going to be prepared. Um, the biggest thing with wrestling is when you're out of competition for a couple weeks, you got to get your weight under control. Um, I know I've done my part to keep my weight under control and um, stuff, and uh, it's just important the whole team does that. And I think we'll be ready to go, and um, I think we're excited to wrestle at home again. And I personally uh, love wrestling Cleveland State. It's not a it's not a rivalry for me, but I'm from Cleveland, so I enjoy wrestling them. And uh, you know, I'm I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, one thing that really helps you guys in a match against Cleveland State or against any team for that matter is the starting five of the lineup. Uh, from Corey Mines all the way to you, you got, you got returning All-Americans, you got uh, nationally ranked wrestlers, you got Austin Matthews who now is nationally ranked and making a name for himself on the D1 scene. How fierce is that first five? I mean, with Mitchell Port, Corey Mines, yourself, there's just, you could just go sweep it straight on through, pins everybody and just take a dominant lead in the match. Is that, is that something that you think scares teams a little bit? Um, you know, I know for me, uh, I'm only focused on the guy I'm wrestling. Um, I do care about the team, and uh, I always do play the, uh, the one thing I can say is I always do play who should win this match and that. Um, so I'm sure they do think about it. Um, dual meets never go how you expect, though. And, uh, but I, I, think, I think they are a little worried about that, but they would definitely be um, concerned with the guy they have right in front of them. You know, so it's the 33 pounders. He's going to be worried about AJ Shop, you know, et cetera. So, um, and that's good for us to have that we have guys that, uh, that, that are like um, almost for sure wins, you know, almost all the time. So mm -hmm. um, that gives us a lot of confidence too. You know, if, it, it's good when I'm up to wrestle and I always just see AJ pin, pin the guy or beat him by 12, 15 points. Then Mitchell comes up, does the same thing, gives me a lot of confidence going into my match, you know, because I train with those guys every day. You can just carry it on into your match, keep that momentum going in a given dual meet. Uh, one person that's got, gaining a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence this season has to be Austin Matthews. Uh, coming in, from transfer from Clarion, now getting onto the D1 scene, made a name for himself, and now he's getting known as he's getting ranked nationally. Uh, he's being able to train with, you know, you, Mitchell Port, AJ Shop, which are all returning All-Americans, guys that are runner-ups nationally, top five nationally. How, what have you seen from uh, Matthews this season, his progress, how he has done in the wrestling room to date? Yeah, um, well, last year he was, uh, he was wrestling our, our guy from Edinburgh, Johnny Greshheimer, and uh, we saw he was really good. Um, I found out he ended up coming here, and uh, first time I wrestled him, he seemed pretty good, and um, since he's been in the Edinburgh room, he's made leaps and bounds, and uh, I think, um, you know, he's, he gets to wrestle with me, and... Um, and AJ and Cliff Moore, and uh, he gets to wrestle with, uh, with the other 57 pounders. So right now, this this year actually, because usually when you come in as a freshman, that's usually the hardest year for you. But this year for me has been the um, the best competition in the room, and um, I think it's making me better, and it's definitely making Austin better. And um, and then also, like I said earlier, I think you know if you're on a team, if you're losing more. And you go out there, maybe you feel more pressure to win for the team, or you just you're not in the right kind of flow. But um, you know, he, when he steps out on the mat in a dual meet, you know he gets to watch uh, Corey wrestle and then the Murderers Row wrestle, and uh, I think it gives him a lot of confidence. So, along with that, and also his training, um, I see him as a top 
top eight guy, all American for sure this year. For yourself, looking forward, uh, you got a lot of matches coming up, which we've alluded to already today. What do you want to improve on to make sure that you are victorious when you go up against that one guy? I know you're focused on just who you have on a given night, hour by hour, day by day, but what do you need to do each day to get better for that given night to make sure that you get your hand raised? Yeah, uh, you're right. Um, I'm just focusing on day to day, but uh, I do also think about what do I got to do to beat the, the top guy in the weight class, you know, the, the main competition. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, you know, I feel my strong assets are my offense. I think when my offense is going, I can take down anybody I want. Um, this year, um, my defense has even gotten better, and it's, it's slowed my offense down in a way that isn't necessarily bad, but I'm trying to make sure that uh, I can get off a lot of attempts, successful attempts on, on my feet, and then I'm working on top because, again, I'm so confident on my, on my feet in wrestling that uh, I've been working a lot on top this morning I've already trained, uh, try, you know, working really hard to, to not only keep the guy down but also turn him. And uh, that, that's important in wrestling if you can pin the guy. First of all, you get off the, uh, the mat a lot quicker. And, uh, and also if, if we're talking about team points, it, it gets you a lot more team points. So for me, I think that's been the number one area is uh, working a lot harder on top to, to get the pins and, and uh, just to keep my offense going on my feet. Let's hope those uh, <clears throat> points come as that will uh, lead to wins for yourself, for the team, move your national rank up and move the team's national rank up as the uh, season goes along, Dave. And uh, good luck as the season does progress, and I'm sure we'll be talking as it uh, goes along and gets closer to nationals. Yeah. Next, we will hit the hardwood and talk Edinburgh's men's basketball. Stay tuned. Earlier this week, I caught up with head men's basketball coach Pat Cleary and talked about his team's progress this season. Coach Cleary, a big start for your team uh, after the preseason win over Miami of Ohio, a Division I school. What was going through your mind? Obviously, you want to start anew with this Edinburgh men's basketball team, and you got to argue that was probably the best way you could start it off. It was, and it was. And it wasn't just so much that, that we beat a team from the MAC. But it was just the way we played. We played harder. We played together. Our energy level was very high. It, and, and we really laid it all on the line defensively. Uh, I was just really proud of the effort the guys gave. I, I mean, we could have lost the game. But if we would have gone down playing as hard as we did, that, that's all we can ask for. These guys laid it all out there. And, and, and to us, I think it set some really high expectations for ourselves, knowing that we have that in the tank. So you started off in the preseason on the right foot, continued it when you got into the regular season with the win over Penn State Greater Allegheny and then continuing it with the win in the PSAC to start it off against Seton Hill. After those first two contests, what did you see from your team positively, negatively that maybe set the tone for the regular season? Uh, it was more of the same. I thought our energy level was great. I thought, you know, in that Seton Hill game, you know, we played really hard. We played together. We played without turning the basketball over. You know, we went ahead, we made some shots, but we really kind of stuck to our, our goals defensively. We have a set of numbers that we try to look at after every game to make sure that we hit the, our marks defensively. And we hit them in that game as well as the Miami game, as well as the Penn State branch campus games. And uh, that's something that we're looking forward to is just making sure that we maintain our defensive consistency. Had Cal here in the uh, first PSAC home doubleheader with both men's and women's teams here. Um, unfortunately, Cal was able to escape that one with a victory from your guys. I know you were frustrated after that game, thought that was very, very winnable. You were, your team was in it down the stretch. What were your thoughts about that loss? I know uh, right after the game you told Mike Fenner after the Penn State Du Bois game that you wish you just had a few more of those points you had on Tuesday night on the Saturday matinee or with the big Exactly. Bowlers. We we missed a lot of shots. We missed free throws. We missed uh, uh, three-point shots. We missed two-point shots. But, but the main thing was is uh, we just didn't play with the same intensity level, the same level of, uh, uh, of, of commitment to defense uh, that we did in our Seton Hill game. And that's what was frustrating is to build a winning streak, you got to keep it going. You know, for us to kick that one away what was really frustrating and, and just the fact that our, our energy level wasn't there. And I don't know what it was, but, you know, we, we worked like heck to make sure we're bringing it every day. You mentioned that some of the – areas that they lacked on that Saturday loss. One was from the free throw line. Early on, your team has been 
very solid from the free throw line. Is that something you really, really harp on, especially in practices? Because a lot of times games can be won or lost at the candy strike. Well, that's exactly it. Is we, we need to make our free throws. Uh, the PSAC West, uh, all of our games can be single-digit games. I mean, there's no gimmies. There's very rarely any blowouts in this league. So, so when you have that many tight games, you've got to capitalize on the free ones as much as you can. Somebody that's been doing well at the free throw line and really from the field overall this season is Henri Wade Chapman. Uh, really coming to his own, uh, especially a hot start. Seton Hill just almost took over the game really in the first half, gave yourself a good cushion at the intermission. What have you seen from him? He's, done, he's been a vocal leader, a talent-wise, skill-wise production leader for this team. How have you thought about his game so far this season? Uh, I, I really have been impressed with him, but it all goes back – to last season uh, about the first of the year last year his season really turned around and he took giant steps forward and he maintained that through the offseason he stayed up here over the summer got a job work lifted you know was in the gym all the time on his own getting stuff done and so he really worked hard at his game and and that has maintained throughout the fall uh, when the guys checked in the school you know he took a natural leadership role with this team and we just need you know more guys to make sure they're buckling down and following his lead. Coach, there's so many new faces on this team in the starting lineup on the bench. You told us at uh, PSAC Media Day that, you know, hopefully we got some guys we can sneak up on some people with. I think Edinburgh's name is a little bit more known now in the PSAC after the starts of the season, but what would you like them to continue to tell the fellow PSAC members as the season continues? I want to make sure they know that when, when, we, when they're coming to play us, or we're going to play them, that we are going to play harder than they are. And, and you know, that's, that's something that we need to develop, that we bring it every game. Uh, the two games that we lost uh, weren't our best game intensity-wise. We need to bring intensity. We need to bring passion. We need to bring a level of importance. Because when you give games away in this league, it, it, it's really hard to make them up. I mean, losing that game against California, I mean, there's a huge difference in our league between being 2-0 and and 1-1. There's only a couple teams that are 2-0. and We needed that, but now that we've dug that a little bit of a hole, we need to make sure that we don't dig it any deeper. We need to make sure in those close games that we have the spirit. I think we have a great group of young guys. I think they get along great. I think they're uh, holding each other accountable, you know, for, for the way that they're playing. But we just need a little bit more, you know. I think we're running, at, you know, at about a 8 or, you know, 7 or 8. If we get that thing running at a 9 or 10, I think we can really be dangerous. Jamin Mason sat out last year with a red shirt. Uh, maybe that was a positive or negative experience. Seems to be positive thus far for him uh, as your point guard, the uh, local product here. What have you seen from him? Personally, I've seen that he's, he's matured a little bit more as a, as a leader on the court, but I think he could even S excel at that more. Do you feel the same? Uh, well, back to how it started is uh, I think that the redshirt year was very positive for him. Uh, I think it let him kind of ease into the college game so the learning curve hasn't been as steep as when he gets on the court. I think it's kind of been a natural progression for him. He had a great high school career. He's local. Everybody around here has known of him. And so he hasn't been a mystery to anyone in the area. But it has allowed him to assimilate himself with the team and, and really kind of you know take that role you know, alongside Henri uh, to make sure, you know, that the, guy, the guys know what it takes. I mean, there were huge stretches of last season, and both of those guys were around that weren't fun times. You know, we'd lose multiple games in a row. We just didn't have uh, things going our way. And they kind of learned from that. And so now I think they can kind of be, you know, uh, what propels us to keep us from getting into those lulls. Last one, Coach. Uh, with these other, with these next games coming up, you're coming into the meat of the PSAC schedule. You're gonna have the crossover coming up during the winter break from class. What does your team need to do other than bring passion and intensity to these close games to make sure that you come out on the winning side of those close decisions? We need to execute. Uh, I keep harping on the guys, not only offensively and defensively, but we need to execute and transition. Uh, a lot of teams, especially the teams in the East, like to play fast, and, and you just can't take plays off and, and just jog up and down the court. Uh, we need to be better uh, in executing in transition, both offensively and defensively, because we, we just can't sit there and say, we're going to outscore you. Uh, we need to be able to dictate the pace of play. And I think that we have quality depth. I think we have 
you know, guys who are in good physical condition. And I think if we are able to be the people that dictate what goes on on the floor, that it's going to be a huge advantage for us. I'd like to thank Coach Cleary again for his time earlier this week. In addition to Coach, I caught up with guard Sheldon Brogdon to talk about his individual success in his first year as an Edinburgh Fighting Scott and also how the team has fared overall thus far. All right, Sheldon, a, a big, big week for you individually in your first year with Edinburgh coming in, having some career high point totals, especially from downtown. How have you been feeling in these first few games despite the wins or losses? How have you felt with your individual performance? Uh, I feel good. I feel like I could do a lot better, but uh, I'm going to take it slow and take it one game at a time, and I think I'll get better as the season goes on. One game that you uh, have already taken in is the uh, game against Penn State Dubois. A lot of records for the team, both with the point total and all, all around just the overall performance from the team. You as well had a very uh, great performance for your uh, career, 16 points in that game. How did you feel you performed in that game, which was an outstanding win for the team? Uh, I feel like I performed good. As a team, I think we performed well, too, coming off a loss. We needed to get a good win and uh, so we can get our confidence back up. But overall, it was good. Another game you had was a non-conference game against the Wheeling Jesuit down in Wheeling, West Virginia. Unfortunately, the team suffered a nine-point loss in that one, but you had over 20 points in that game, which earned you uh, Scott of the Week for Edinburgh University this week. With those two performances, the 16.1 and over 20, I believe it was 24 points on Sunday, is that the player you want to be for this Edinburgh men's basketball team? Uh, yes, I want to be like a good player that comes off the bench, brings energy, brings scoring, but fortunately we lost lost the Willington game. So I think, I think we should do better. Feel me? We've been having good practices and we're really focused on the Slippery Rock game on Wednesday. For you individually, from downtown, you, you take those shots. You started it off with the uh, season opener against Penn State Greater Allegheny. You were feeling it from beyond uh, the three-point line, and you've continued that thus far. Is that really a point of strength you feel in your game, is uh, your touch from beyond the arc? Uh, yes, yes. I feel like I've been shooting since high school, and that's been probably been my strength since high school. As a team, you touched on the strong practices. You just concluded one tonight in preparation to get back into some PSAC games here before the uh, finals week and winter break in the season. What do you feel the team needs to do? Uh, a lot of buzz around this team coming off the preseason victory over a Division I team. Uh, some wins early on here in the season, especially a big one at Seton Hill in your PSAC opener. What needs, what needs to happen for this team to continue that success as we go deeper and deeper in this season? Uh, I think we just need to focus more, come together, and be a family. You, I think we'll be, play better if we become a family and just stay focused. I'd also like to thank Sheldon for his time earlier this week as well. On the other side, we are going to congratulate this week's Scots of the Week and also take a look at what is upcoming for Edinburgh Athletics. Congrats to Sheldon Brogdon of the men's basketball team and Laurel Lindsay of the women's basketball team for being named this week's Male and Female Scots of the Week. Brogdon had 16 points to help the Fighting Scots route Penn State Dubois 144-61 to back on November 24th, as well as he posted 24 points, leading all borough scorers in the guys' 91-78 to loss to Wheeling Jesuit on Sunday. Lindsay led all Fighting Scots in scoring in the team's 59-49 to non-conference loss to Bloomsburg as the graduate guard dropped 16 points. She went 4-for-6 from three-point land in that contest, moving her into a into ninth place all time with three point field goals made in Edinburgh history. Let's take a quick look at what is upcoming for Edinburgh Athletics. The swimming teams get back into action at the very important Wooster Inventational on Friday and Saturday. Wrestling, as we talked to Dave Habit and Cliff Moore tonight, they have the PSAC Championships at Bloomsburg on Saturday. The wheelchair basketball team has a doubleheader with the University of Pitt on Saturday as part of a 40-year anniversary celebration for OSD. The uh, cross-country season wraps up at the National Championships down in uh, sunny, warm U Louisville, Kentucky. And the men's ba and women's basketball teams have a doubleheader against Mercyhurst on Saturday. And on Sunday, the women's team have a, has a non-conference game against Virginia State. That's at 1 p.m. at Macomb Fieldhouse to wrap up the events before there is a nice week-long break as we have finals, everybody, 
Good luck with all of those. Try to make it out to support the Edinburgh student athletes this weekend and over the holiday break. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and go Borough.